Welcome to the website for the American Mavericks radio series. I'm Suzanne Vega, and I'm the host of this 13-part program, which will be broadcast nationally on public radio stations. You can check with your local public radio station for broadcast information. American Mavericks is a celebration of the music and stories of the visionary American composers who broke from European traditions of classical music to blaze their own trails. And blaze they did. You'll hear music that doesn't normally make it to the airwaves. Pianos played with forearms and upper bodies, pieces composed for silverware from the local diner, compositions performed deep in caves. There's music by Charles Ives and Laurie Anderson, John Cage and Harry Parch, Meredith Monk and Pauline Oliveros, and many other Mavericks. I chose to host American Mavericks because it's a truly entertaining series. The music captured here is beautiful and interesting and provocative. It's a living thing that could feed popular culture, which in my opinion is sorely in need of feeding at the moment. The ideas behind the music are an interesting part of American culture and American history. And this is such a good time to look at what it means to be an American and what it means to be a maverick. So stay tuned and we'll show you some behind the scenes footage of the production of this radio series. And please stay around long enough to check out this website. You'll find in-depth interviews, performances by the San Francisco Symphony, and composers' works in their entirety, along with their other creations, including paintings and sculpture, poetry and calligraphy, and even a straw bale house. You can be your own maverick by composing music on a variety of virtual instruments, including the Rhythmicon, which was created for us by the good folks who brought us the theremin. We even have some footage of a riot at the Champs-Élysées in 1923, when George Antile performed his wildly aggressive piano works, and Eric Satie helped work the crowd into a frenzy. Maverick music can do that, but then that's part of what makes it so wonderful. Stay tuned. It's a, it's almost a funny moment to come out of and define Mavericks with like the herd of cows. The herd of cows. So I think we want to have more fun with it. Is all. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think Those are right. cows. Pretty dumb, huh? Or something. <laughs> you see, the word Maverick comes from. And yeah, I, I think just it's these I think words. it's necessary actually to it, to have it be totally that solid. It's totally necessary. If, if yes, I'm, those are cows. You see, the word Maverick comes from Samuel Augustus Maverick, who lived from 1803 to 1870 a New Englander who resettled near San Antonio in what is now Maverick County and became a rancher. Soon any unbranded, unfenced-in steer was called a maverick, and the word eventually came to mean independent soul, nonconformist, dissenter. Okay. Okay. Yes, those are cows. Okay, that's enough. You see, the word maverick comes from Samuel Augustus Maverick, who lived from 1803 to 1870, a New Englander who resettled near San Antonio in what is now Maverick County and became a rancher. Dwight predictably praised the Beethoven composition and lambasted Gottschalk's music for its, quote, amateurish, ina amateurish inanities. Quote, amateurish inanities. Next time we'll spend more time with the music of Aaron Copland and his and others switch from modernism to populism. It'll be a fascinating hour, I hope, where we'll talk about the compelling relationship between progressive politics and conservative music. I'm Suzanne Vega. Join me then. Fab, let's go get something to eat. All right. <laughs> she doesn't have to do the credits. Yeah. Yeah.